I didn't kill him with cancer. I had nothing to do with it. I live in heaven, son. There's no cancers here. I had nothing to do with it. All that is a work of hell in the flesh. I said, she's a soul in her, Jesus. Why didn't you heal her so she could win the souls? But you didn't heal her so she died. Of course, our pastor, he didn't know what to do. He didn't pray for her. Nobody in church did. We, we didn't even have no friends that knew that Jesus was a healer. In fact, some of, a lot of our friends, even pastors, if you t talk to them about that, they, they get mad. I don't want to get hung into that healing bunch. I'd be afraid to say that. I'd be afraid of disease would come up on me. I, from my pastor, I don't want to get hung into that healing bunch. I mean, how stupid can you get? Totally dumb, man. You're talking about dumb. That's the height of ignorance. And always remember this. God does not bless ignorance from nobody. He finally told his disciples, well, they're doing this and do that. You know, but they, they shouldn't be doing that. He says, no, 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 no. Or they wouldn't believe this, wouldn't believe that. I said, well, if, they're, if you tell them the truth and they're ignorant, he says, to let them go. He says, you can't help them. He said, if they're ignorant, don't spend all your time with them. If they're ignorant, let them stay ignorant still. That's a verse of scripture. Let them stay ignorant still if they don't want to change. All you have to do is have a willing spirit that you want to, if you're involved in anything that's wrong or not right or not listen to me, have a, have a willing spirit that you want to change. And you tell God you want to change. You say, God, please change me, Lord, change me. God, let me tell you, God, what I want to do. And if you'll do this, your whole life will change. God, I want to be the man that you want me to be. I mean, I know I'm not the smartest man in the world. I sure don't have as much sense as you have, God. But I, I want to be the man that you want me to be. I will go where you want me to go. I will do what you want me to do. And she's now have four churches, paid cash for all of them except one. And God never called me to pastor. Because he gave me a field ministry of teaching. If he called me to pastor, I'd pastor. He's called Zona. Zona's also got a pretty good field ministry herself. Because she's learned how to pray for people. But she's also a good, a good pastor. But I said, Lord, don't, don't, don't let the devil steal all the good things that God has for you. Now I'll go with these three things and then, I'll, I'll, then we'll close today. You have three fathers. This is Father's Day. You understand me? This is Father's Day. You have three fathers. Your first father, which is the seventh verse, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, call to be saints. That's what you're called to be. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. All good things come down from God Almighty. All bad things come to you come from the, from the Prince of Darkness. But you, and you get all good things to come to you. I'm telling you that you can. I was born into a sugar crop our family. I used to work for 25 cents a day. Hard labor. Hot sun. All day long. 25 cents a day. Grown men made 50 cents a day. Back during the Depression in the 30s. Grown men made 50 cents a day. Boys, 12, 13, 14 years old, they, 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 you, of course you know how to work when you're raised like that. And I was a little busy boy. Before I could catch the school bus in the morning, I had to walk and we had a pretty, pretty good sized farm, went way up on the mountain, and I had to go get all the cattle and drive them into the barn before I got, could catch the school bus. My brother and my daddy would milk them. 
We had one Jersey cow that gave five gallons of milk a day. Well, in four or five, six days, you've got so much regular milk, so much butter and milk, and such, so many pounds of butter, you don't know what to do with it all. It's a liver horse. Just one cow. Five gallons of milk a day. That's four days, you've got 20 gallons of milk. 20 gallons. So we sell it to the neighbors. They bring buckets to buy milk. <laughs> Man, he lowered it to God. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When I got to the point I made a dollar a day, I thought, my God, I'll get rich. So I became, I dropped out of school, went to Knoxville, got me a job. But I was learned, Daddy taught me how to work, and I worked, worked real hard. I got me a job in the A&P, A&P supermarket. And I'd go in, I'm supposed to go into work at 8 o'clock. Well, I'm used to getting up on a farm about, about before daylight, and I'd be out in the field, you know, sometimes 6 o'clock in the morning after you ate a good breakfast. But you can't just eat, you can't eat cornflakes. You fall out. You'd fall out. <laughs> but by 8 to 9 o'clock, you'd fall out. You have to eat four or five hot biscuits with butter and, and, and milk, milk gravy or ham or bacon or sausage and two or three or four eggs and good farm eggs. You know, the, your own chickens lay them. They taste so good. And eat some, eat some blackberry jelly with them. We had, a, we had a plum orchard, had an apple orchard, and a blackberry f farm. Like, and So you eat some of that with them, you know. Then you, <laughs> then you go to work. Time 11.30 comes, the dinner bell rung, time 11.30 comes for, for lunch. He was so hungry he could not get to the house. I was tall and slim and lean and hard. And you, I wouldn't gain a pound because you sweat all day working. If you want to work all day, just get you, get you a mule or a horse and get you a plow and follow it all day long. And, 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 That'll drink a knot in your tail, I'll guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> well, after I learned in the business world, got in the business world, because I, I saw around my family and around the families and community that I would never, was going to amount to anything if I stayed there. So I've got to find my own way. So I left. Dropped, I dropped out of school. Went to Knoxville, got me a job. I worked from 17 years old to about 19. Mr. Johnson, he was a supervisor over eight big supermarkets in Knoxville, and he had to go visit every one of them every day. Big supermarkets. I'd go in at 5 o'clock in the morning sometimes, 6 o'clock. I'm not supposed to go to work till 8. I don't get paid till 8. I'd go in anyway. I mean, 8 o'clock, that's nearly half of the morning's gone. I do a lot of work from five to eight. I'd have my I'd have my department in the store look like a picture. It was so clean and so weird. And so Mr. Johnson, our store manager's name was Mr. Bishop. He was like my daddy. And and, and Mr. Johnson, he was a supervisor over all the supermarkets in Knoxville. And and he, he said to Mr. Bishop one day he said, because he just walked in, you know, and whatever Mr. Bishop didn't have to stop doing what you're doing. He said, Come on, Bishop, let's go. Because he had to go to eight stores every day. Take the manager and walk to the stock, walk up to the meat department. You're a big meat case along from here, that wall back there, right? And he'd walk up to there and look at the meat real closely. If he saw one steak with a little brown spot on it, he'd say, Bishop, manager said, Bishop, have, have your man to remove that steak right there with the brown spot on it. We don't sell that in the A&P store. So he told me, he said, come, come here. Mr. Johnson said, you move that steak right there, it's got a brown spot on it. Get it out of there. Get it out of the showcase. And so he was real strict. I'd have mine look like a picture time he got there. He said to Mr. Bishop one day, he said, who's in charge of this department here? He said, every time I come in here, it's cleaner than any department, any store I'm over, eight supermarkets. Who does this? 
that young boy standing there, I'm like 17, 18, he says, that young boy, he says, that young kid? He said, yeah. He said, he says, but Mr. Johnson, he says, the night watchman tells me he comes to work sometimes at 5 o'clock in the morning. He don't get paid till 8. And he don't care. From experience now, let me help you today. If you want to go forward in the world, in the financial world, you, 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 you be real honest and be a real good worker because God don't bless lazy people. And you go to work early and you'll be the only one to do it. Be the best employee the company's got wherever you work. It won't be long till you'll be managing the place. God puts me in the mind of a big successful corporation. If you will show God that you will cast out devils, if you will show God that you'll go pray for people all night long to get victory for them, if you will show God that you'll, you'll win souls for God, if you'll show him that you'll obey this, you'll obey the Bible, you'll show him with pleasure, he'll show you he's God. He showed you his love through Jesus, his son, gave his son on the cross. But that's where you first saw the light. <clears throat> listen, listen, but you, you know it, but you probably haven't sung it in weeks. Now, you don't know that. Most of you here don't know this. That's one of the worst mistakes you'll ever make. You understand me? God gave me a supernatural vision one time, and he showed me the cross right down to me. I was in my bed, and blood was dripping off of the cross. Blood, vision. <laughs> Oh, God, oh, God, God. I'm sitting in the motel room. I'm going to have to get ready in a little while to go speak to a whole room full of businessmen at a banquet. I said, oh, God. How could I waste so many years of my life? And this was probably in my 30s then. I said, how could I waste so many years of my life? God. I'd be, several years ago, Lord, I'd be wondering where I can get a good steak tonight and maybe hear Don Cornell or, or Eddie Fisher or Perry Como or somebody that could sing good and eat a nice dinner. I said, oh, God, what a privilege it is for me for you to love me enough to let me go give my testimony at a big banquet where there's a lot of professional businessmen. I said, I can't hardly wait. I can't hardly wait to get there to give my testimony again. And I've given it hundreds of times. I said, I can't hardly wait to get there to give my testimony again because what you've done for me, Jesus, I want to hear it again myself. 